Hello, it's Damien here. Welcome. Welcome. Here we are. This is a very exciting moment because here we are. We've done some composing walks. And now here we are with the composing walk performance, our first ever one. And uh, down here at Warrenora Outdoors. Hello, Veronique. Hi, Damien. <laughs> nice to be here. We're just discussing kind of the mood, the feel, because this is all really new. So uh, we're trying to learn how to not be too TV and how <laughs> not to be too concert. Um, and we've just had two hours since I finished the previous little composing walk this morning uh, to set up all sorts of cameras and gear. Where we are is at Warrenora River, which is about an hour south of Sydney, for those of you listening from elsewhere. And I know there are some people come watching us from Hawaii and from country Victoria and from the Blue Mountains and from Sydney, of course. So welcome. And uh, we're here in a little beautiful area in a park called Burnham Burnham Sanctuary. And Burnham Burnham Sanctuary is um, just a kind of a recreation area right down on the water. Oh. Uh, Veronique, you have played with the ACO, you've played a lot of Australian music, a lot of landscape stuff. Is that right? So do you find like you've heard a lot of, played a lot of different Australian composers landscape stuff. Um, do you find that a lot of composers do what I'm doing of doing grungy stuff plus beautiful stuff or Not is really. that part of it? I would say in my improvisation, I do a lot of grungy stuff yeah. and, and because I think of, I lived in the Northern Territory for a while, so I love yeah. that landscape and just yeah. the contrast. Yeah. But I wouldn't say most composers do it. Uh, so there's a lot of tradition there and Veronique has played, is extremely experienced, so it's a complete thrill to have you here. <laughs> To to play this because <laughs> the think, other th I the think I am. <laughs> the other thing that's going on is that normally, you know, a deadline for a composition would be like six weeks out or something like that. And of course, this is compressed because I'm going for the walks now, and I don't want to, I don't want to anticipate and and not have the experience down here and like do a piece and cheat beforehand. So really, we met up this week to look at some stuff, but also we're kind of going to workshop because I want to give everybody this sense of behind the scenes of what we would do ahead of a yeah. concert, yeah? yeah? So we're going to dive in. Uh, Liam, if you want to show what's on the GoPro, we've got the scores set up. Now, earlier on at 11 o'clock, I did a little thing where we talked about the wattle tree, which has the yellow on the kind of dappled green background. And so we, I drew this thing for those who were not with us. I drew this texture, which is like the leaves in the background, and then these sharp, striking elements jumping out, which is basically in a simple, simple way trying to catch the idea of this, this consistent dark um, shades of a landscape with this bright yellow jumping out. We have the background, which I decided we would use like the bottom string, and we have one open string, oh, we have the G string, then also winding around, and we have a D-sharp there. Can we just hear what that D-sharp is and can you move the bottom note around a bit? Extra. Sure. <laughs> what do you mean you're not sure? That hey, is epic, mind. man. <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh, is that all right? It's, it's epic, man. That is epic. Okay, so then we moved on to, um, you already did that. Of course, I've got these, this says bow. Oh. Looks like bow, doesn't it? Bow. Does a little. And the idea is or just to make it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> make it move. So then what I did, I thought, well, it would be interesting to see if we could move on to having two notes, both fingers moving around kind of in different directions at different times. Look at these beautiful dogs. Yeah. Look at all those good. It's all good. You can walk through. Those dogs are so beautiful. They're very clean. <laughs> they are. Look at them. I bet they want to roll in the dirt. <laughs> all right. Uh, yeah, so we basically, down here, for those who are not trained to read music, we have this note, which is a B, which sounds like this. And we have this note, which is a, a D sharp. And they're on two different strings. Two different strings, okay? That's so then what I'm saying to Veronique is can she move her fingers up and down independently to get a kind of more of a winding sound as well as doing that 
as well as bone. patting your head, as well as running, rubbing your tummy. Fenix is nervous. <laughs> <laughs> What's interesting to me about this though that I notice with all of music um, is that like it makes total sense that that's what we'd be doing and then when we and and yes all of that and the texture and everything then as soon as we hear it it sounds like the emotion we want to attach to it is something distressing and harsh and harsh so can I just do an experiment I I completely expect that maybe it'll still sound harsh and and, and angsty but can you play it in a way where you're just thinking emotionally that it's just light and and and, and it's just a tree in the wind just With the being, twisty as well? Yeah, the twistiness and I don't know if it's possible but we'll have to see. That's good. It's all about intention, isn't it? I think so. Yeah. So the idea is then I needed like the ping, like some contrasting ping sound, oh. which is the flowers, the bright yellow flowers jumping through this mottled bush at us as we walk along. So what I was going for was a left hand pits. Oh. Can we just show people what a left hand pits is? On the open left hand. <laughs> on the open A string. Yeah, it's particularly kind of yeah. Oh, that's nice. We could do the A as well, the E as well. It's got a particularly kind of harsh quality mm -hmm. to it. Yeah. Can you play the other pits, the normal pits? I can do it harsh. Oh. Yeah, but it's more full yeah. sounding. Whereas this one's what play that one. Yeah, because it's lower and also because you're usually doing something else at the same time. So, so you've got you to have much. You've got to dig yeah. in. I'm going to step out of shot. Why don't you do like a two minute improvised piece for us based on the, the wattle tree? Great, so good, really good. Um, it would take like 50 years to write that down, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's our piece now, okay? Oh, you can yeah, have yeah, half. Thanks, <laughs> <laughs> Some changes I'd like to make already. <laughs> yeah, that's really good. Actually, what I like about it, um, especially, you know, even though it's a bit of a trick to do the left hand pits, um, you made it look very easy, but I know there's a lot of brain going into it. But what's nice is because it's all coming from the same little moment here, mm. it's like it is the same tree. The textures mm. and the colours, the contrast on the same tree. So the fact it comes from just this one hand on the one instrument, mm. um, you know, oh, sculpturally, yeah, yeah. it's really good. Mm. Yeah. All right, let's move on. We might just have a tiny little break. If you could um, play a video. There's, there's a few pieces I've been doing while I'm um, down here, but I've also been looking back at my back catalogue of pieces and uh, this video we're about to see, you're going to see pictures of trees that I took uh, in 2017 while I was travelling around Australia, trying to get as many contrasting pictures of eucalyptus trees as I could. And um, I'm coupling it with a piece from a string quartet that I wrote called Silk Panels. And that was inspired by uh, 15th century Japanese ink wash paintings. So I'm connecting the two kind of histories of, of landscape inspiration.
Right, I hope you enjoyed that. Now we're going to move on to another score here. On Friday, we did a little walk down here as a sort of a preview, and I sat down and did a piece inspired by the Sydney Red Gum. Now, everybody knows Sydney Red Gums, even though you don't know that you know it, because they're the most common tree in Sydney. If you've ever been to one of the beaches, um, let's say up at Mossman, where there's Chowder Bay, um, and then there's a headland either to the north and to the south of that, and you go up to, onto those sandstone headlands, and that's where these Sydney red gums love to live. And they often have ferns at the base of them, and it's like this amazing prehistoric world. I keep going, it's like Dr. Zeus drew a prehistoric world, because the feature of those gums is they have these really windy kind of branches, these crazy windy branches. Mm -hmm. But they're called Angophora costata. Anyway, they're amazing. They're all over Sydney. Amazing tree. They're called a smooth apple by, by colonials for reasons that only they would understand. Let's have a look at what I drew. I was trying to draw this tree. <laughs> and then out of a little hole in the tree came a lorikeet as well. So literally That's I'm cool. looking at this tree composing and then this lorikeet pops up and watched me compose for half an hour live on stream, which, you know, you couldn't get better than that. So what I did was I drew the little lorikeet figure and I notated that and then I drew sort of a windy figure which is a bit like baroque music where the same figure can go down then up or up then down you played a lot of baroque music in the past yeah <laughs> yeah but you know what I mean like yeah, the yeah, figuration yeah, yeah. stays tightly in the same yeah. sort of thing and winds around yeah. so I'm talking to Veronique about that because we haven't practiced this piece we're just going to have a go at it um, and then we're going to use this tree. There's a tree over here we'll show you in a sec that Veronique's going to use as a, basically a graphic score to do another little piece. Let's try and just do this one as written for me and let's try and get this lorikeet sound going first. So that's what we're seeing on the score is two crosses and that's opening, which means you play them basically percussively, right? Yeah. Not so. The pitch is not important. And then up to the top note, a little trill. Yeah. It, sound, it sounds very Baroque, doesn't it? Do you think it sounds Baroque? Yeah. It reminds me of those, those um, bestiary kind of things. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bit too polite. I mean, it's cute. I like Can that we make it better. shorter too? Because they kind of go... <laughs> I think the gap between the first top note and when you do the trill needs to be... It needs yeah. to be short. Yeah. That's good. Getting better. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I think that this gra this graphic here really shows the shape of it. Yeah. That's true. I'm stopping. Hmm. Right. So there you go, Laura Keats. She's getting help there. Us out. <laughs> um, okay. Good. And then I drew all this to do is not take the trunk of the tree. I wanted to take just a cross section of the those crazy windy, the windy. Um, branches. A little bit, a bit slower than that. Yeah, because it's a bit more languid, you know, they're not. That's nice. Yeah. And so what we get then is that we need to keep a contrast between the lorikeet, which is short and abrupt, and then oh, the, the languid flow of the things, because otherwise we lose a bit of clarity in the yeah. composition. Can I try? Or? Do you want to, yeah, try a little bit of the two together. I think the octave one you did is better. I think you should. Yeah, that gives us enough. Have a flow. We're in the middle of practicing that. I think what we should do now is um, just reset that camera for me, if you would, I'm Liam. Good, cool. And we're just going to have a look at the oh, yeah. at the tree over there. And if um, and we're going to zoom in on it, just zoom in as far as you can on it, Liam. And we'll have to remind me. Okay, so I'm going <laughs> to stand right between you and the tree. 
It's the brightest one there. The brightest like, one. It's this way. With the pale. Uh, of course. The pale okay. one that's got an almost pinky hue. <laughs> you're all right, mate. It's okay. I'm not even a shot, I hope. No, Please no, do you're, go you're on the welcome. shot. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's live stream, so it's very cash. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> I've got a very nice shot of you, Damien. Okay, good. Can uh, you can you see the it's tree now? Rather pixelated, so we might need to change the um. It's okay. Let me have a look. Focus. I will focus in on that one. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's focus it. I was right. There it is. That one there. So the one in the middle of shot there, the white, the one that looks yes. white on here. I was, yeah. But what we're interested in is those branches at the top. Do you see how kind of windy they are? No, this is like no TV show you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, here's a new one, people. I didn't. This we really didn't expect to do. This. Okay, so the <laughs> idea is we're going to use that tree as a graphics core. Basically, if you could play that tree for us, please, Verity. <laughs> I'm sorry I didn't bring this tree over to your place uh, on, <laughs> on oh, Wednesday when we met. in the tree? Alexis, I mean, not Well, right there is a dead branch, so we have to assume there's a chance. So if you see a lorikeet, play the lorikeet. If you don't see a lorikeet, maybe call out to the lorikeet. <laughs> All right, here we go. about how sparingly those That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Can you add, I think one thing I was wanting is, could you add a few um, going down a bit lower as well? Oh, okay. Because I think some of the more... Oh, not this though, isn't it? No, I think going yeah, down onto some of the lower strings gives us a bit more of a sort of burnished yeah. tone as well. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> Thank you. Nice, really nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's really good. Um, actually, what I liked about that one is that it kind of gave us more of the atmosphere. That, like, that is the atmosphere we're in right now. Hmm. We're not kind of overlaying a kind of a Australia is this hot, barren landscape kind of oh, vibe yeah. on it. Because no. down here, it's, it's not. It's so gorgeous. Yeah, it's very good. Alright, so look, time is going really fast as it does on the stream. No. And so what I think we should do is go to some of the pieces that we prepared earlier. Ooh. Um, which one do you want to play first, do you think? I think we might go with, we might finish with the peppermint one, sure. eh? Um, this grey gum one, everybody, I talked about a grey gum on Friday and I was showing everybody how it has the deep grey colour and then underneath the grey bark is often bright orange oh. on the same yeah. tree.
<laughs> nice. Cue the birds. You Cue don't the get that at the yes. opera house. <laughs> that was really beautiful. Um, what's kind of, uh, are you just, when you're playing that beautifully, are you just thinking about, uh, maybe it's a dumb question, like madly about technically what's going on or emotionally, imagery, what helps you best to kind of play this stuff? Yes, those things, but also just listening to the sound because you can't always predict exactly the sound that's going to come out. So it's working with that at the same time mm. as what's written on the page. Mm. And bringing some kind of phrase within what you... Yeah. Is this notation kind of, do you think it's easier or harder than strict notation? Both, because you have to think about phrases for yourself, not that you wouldn't usually for yourself, mm. right, just to see what can... Because I, obviously I could play most phrases a few ways. Uh, this is Sydney Peppermint. Sydney Peppermint is one of the most common trees in Sydney. If you ever see a tree driving around that has lots of bark at the bottom and then the top has beautiful, graceful, and if the fruit is kind of like a, almost like a globe, okay, well you know that's a Sydney Peppermint. And you can also crush the leaves and they smell really peppery and they're quite thin leaves. There is one just over there which we can't see but it's sort of behind there next to our Angophora. Um, Eucalyptus piperita. For those of you writing this down at home, Eucalyptus piperita. Uh, Sydney peppermint, lovely, dramatic tree, can get up to 50 metres. So dramatic and wonderful. Um, and I think when we imagine gum trees, this is one of the ones I think we really imagine in our, in our subconscious, you know, that sums up that eucalyptus kind of genus. So this piece is inspired by that. Now there are two sounds, um, Veronique, can we just show before you play it? There are two sounds, again, I like contrasting sounds. And uh, the first one is this low grungy sound which represents the bark that stays on the trunk of the tree. Brilliant. And so you'll hear in this piece that there are various versions of that grunginess. I mean, there's a point here where it, it says triple F, which means really very, very loud, and that's going to be very grungy. Other times it's not as um, loud, and that's because, you know, the bark has its own texture. And what I'd say to you all, don't listen to it as me making a judgment that the Australian landscape is harsh and foreboding. It's pure texture in this case. So just kind of leave... Uh, emotion to the side for a moment and just think about colour and texture. And then we rise up to the opposite sound at the top, which is just play some top notes there. This beautiful, um, smooth, silky, shiny, white sort of sound. You mean like? Yeah, just some of these top notes. Here. Oh. That's the piece. It explores those two sounds. So thank you very much, Veronique. Thanks, Damien. Have a crack, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sydney Peppermint. <laughs>